Good afternoon and welcome to the Nutrier Township Educational Forum. I am Jack McCall. I'm the Communications Director with Nutrier Township and on the line with us today is Mary Beth Stein from Congresswoman Schakowsky's office and Mary Beth has been gracious enough to join us uh, once again during this uh, very strange year of 2020. Normally we do uh, this forum in our boardroom, but uh, today, like the rest of the world, we're adapting on a Zoom call. And uh, we are glad to welcome the community to join us uh, for the Medicare Part D discussion that Mary Beth will walk us through this afternoon. And uh, if you have questions and you can hold them till later on, it would be great. Uh, Mary Beth is always great about following up and, and with her effervescent smile answering questions. And uh, we will also put this information on the township website uh, later today. Um, so without further ado, Mary Beth, I'll let you get started. Hello, everybody. I just got a notice on my screen that my internet connection is unstable. So uh, that makes me a little nervous. So if that happens, I may have to leave you for a second and we'll reconnect um, without using uh, a VPN, which is what I'm using right now. Anyway, um, thanks for attending today. Uh, we're going to talk about Medicare Part D, everybody's favorite subject. This is the time of year to talk about it. So I'm going to jump right into the presentation. The first thing is the agenda. So we'll we'll just kind of do a brief brief overview of Medicare, Medicare basics. We'll talk about open enrollment, which is right now. It's October 15th through December 7th, as it is every year. And every change we make during that time will take effect starting January 1st of 2021. It's open enrollment. It's always a, a interesting thing. Is it open enrollment 2020, 2021? Well, it happens in 2020, but it actually is effective January 2021. So then we'll go into some of the details about Medicare Part D, talk about Medicare Advantage plans, which are Part C, and then uh, talk about where you can get help paying for the cost of Medicare. And we'll briefly go over what I want you to take home with you. If you take nothing home, you're probably already home because we're on we're on Zoom, but uh, if you take nothing away from this, I just want you to remember that this is an every year event uh, and it's essential. You really do need to evaluate your plan every year to make sure that you're aware of any changes that happen, uh, that your plan intends to implement for next year because when you get to the pharmacy in January, nobody wants to have that aha moment because it's unpleasant that uh, either a drug is more expensive than you expected or it's not covered. So let's go over what's Medicare and who's eligible. Well, first of all, anyone 65 or older is eligible for Medicare, but there are some exceptions. If uh, you are getting Medicare under a spouse's work record, then you could potentially get it earlier. Uh, some people with disabilities, if you've been getting social security disability for two years, you may be eligible for Medicare after 24 months of getting social security disability. People with end-stage renal disease, ESRD, are eligible regardless of age. And there are specific parts of Medicare that cover services. It's also important to remember that Medicare was never intended to cover 100% of your medical costs. There are uh, often co-pays and co-insurances. So let's just look at this. Mary Beth, are you still with us? She probably has to reboot herself in. Seems so, yeah. <laughs> okay. We lose a lot of people? Yeah, hold on one second. I Get bear with me. Jack, if you want to pause the recording, that would be great. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Um, Medicare, so we were talking about original Medicare. Medicare Part D and supplements are, uh, they do have a premium associated with them. They are offered both by private companies, uh, but they are approved by Medicare. 
Medicare Advantage plan is another option, and that's kind of an all-in-one, and that it, it includes your A and B, which is your hospital and medical doctor's appointments, and your D, your drug plan, all in one. You see that supplements are missing from that slide. You cannot, it is illegal to purchase or to sell someone a supplement if they have a Medicare Advantage plan. And this is stuff not really necessarily part of our presentation today. I just want you guys to know about the basics. So, okay, next, uh, Medicare costs. So part A is free as long as you've worked 40 quarters, which is 10 years. Uh, if you did not work that amount, you can always pay for it, but it's really expensive. So uh, you really should uh, seek a SHIP counselor to talk about alternatives. Part B has a monthly premium, and for 2021, it's $148.50. It went out up about $1.90 from last year. And then Part D also has a monthly premium, and that average is $30.50 this year. And the deductible is set at 445. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And again, I'm going to repeat myself a bit in this October 15th through December 7th, because that is really important. Anything happens after the 7th, it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't count. So if you do not make your changes and you needed to make changes after December 7th, you've got to wait a whole year until October uh, 15th of 2021. Everything you do is effective January 1st, and it's the one time of year that you can switch plans, change plans, uh, go back and forth from an Advantage plan to regular Medicare. So really important time of year. It's a short time. It's 45 days, and it includes Thanksgiving. So people really aren't as focused on their Part D plans as they should be because other life is taking over. Um, this year, we've got a lot of time at home, so maybe we'll spend a little more time looking at it. The, uh, there are also additional Medicare enrollment periods, uh, Medicare Advantage. You can enroll in an Advantage plan uh, anywhere from January 1st till the 31st, and you can get out of an Advantage plan at that point also. And then Medicare general, general enrollment is for people that never picked up Part A or B. Uh, if you get Part A for free, you can join at any time of the year, but if you have to pay for Part A, and uh, you want to pick up Part B, you can only do this in January 1st through March 31st. That is effective July 1st. This is for people that chose not to take Medicare when they were first eligible and did not have an employer plan. Okay. All right. So again, I'm repeating myself about the enrollment period, but I can't say this enough, guys. I'm really, I, this is this is a big deal. Um, this time of year, you're getting an annual notice of change from your current plan. They're required to do so. They do it in September. You all should have this. I did hear of some people that didn't get their notice of change yet, which is surprising. Um, they should have. So contact your plan if you haven't gotten it. It's, uh, you may want to sit down at your table and put all your medications out and look at that new plan formulary. That's the list of drugs they cover and make sure that they're affordable for you still, that their, their premiums haven't changed a lot. Deductible could have gone up, but the allowable deductible only went up $20. So see if that's a difference. If they didn't have a deductible last year and they do this year, make note of that. What you want to look at is the total cost of your plan last year to this year and see if there are, are changes. If it's a lot of a big difference, then you want to look at switching plans. So Part D, let's talk about that now. That's run by private companies, but Medicare sets the rules. They offer prescription drug coverage to everybody with Medicare, and they have to include at least 220 drug categories. Um, they're allowed to change costs and coverage every year, uh, as long as they maintain that two drugs per, uh, they have to maintain two drugs offered per category of those 22 categories. So, or 220, excuse me, 220 categories. For example, um, if you have a heart condition, they have to offer at least two drugs that cover cardiac issues. They often offer 10, 20, 30 drugs, but they have to offer at least two. So if they drop one, they have to replace it to maintain at least two drugs. And I this really gets into play when you're talking about very specific, chronic, um, expensive illnesses where they may cover the minimum standard. Plans are allowed to change every year, so now they're doing it. Um, if they, some, are, some aren't, some aren't. I've had some plans stay very consistent. Okay, so they cover prescription and brand name, uh, prescription brand name drugs and generics. 
they do not uh, cover drugs sold outside of the US. So if you wanna go to Canada or um, have your medications shipped from overseas, they're not covered by Medicare Part D. It includes insulins. It does not include the supplies for insulin um, uh, injections, such as needles, test strips, things like that. That's covered under Part B. They, uh, each plan may cover a drug in a different tier. So they may cover, uh, I don't know, let's a statin for cholesterol. Let's say one plan may cover it in, in a tier one, another may cover it in a tier two. The tiers are set up for pricing and we'll go over that in a minute. Okay, now I went over that really fast. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, no questions? I'm gonna keep going. That's all right, I've been doing, I guess. Uh, we have someone that needs to mute their mic, please. There we go, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm not gonna go over this slide in detail except to say that if you have higher incomes, anyone with an income over $88,000 a year as an individual or $176,000 a year, your plan premium will include an IRMA charge. That's income related monthly adjustment amount. And what that means is you will be paying the standard premium, which is the 148.50 plus an additional amount every month, okay? Irma looks at two years prior. So for 2021, they're looking at your 2019 income. The numbers I have on the screen are from 2020. Medicare has not published their uh, their new numbers. So they will be slightly Part A, B, and D. It's three months before your 65th birthday, the month of, and the uh, three months after. Or if you lose your coverage that is offered by your Medicare um, or by your employer, then if you don't enroll when you're first eligible, then there's a 1% per month penalty for all months you are eligible but not enrolled. This gets really expensive. And, I, and people exempt from this are people who have employer plans, COBRA may or may not count depending, often it does, or people that have retiree, union, VA, or TRICARE coverage. But I'm gonna go to an example next and just show you how this adds up if you don't enroll when you're first eligible. And this is quite detailed. Um, I, I'm gonna have you go to the slides at a later time. But basically, if someone decided not to enroll when they were 65 in 2017, they are going to um, pay 1% of all the months covered, uh, all the months since they turned 65 and were eligible. So if you figure 2017, they're eligible in January, you, and this is a, a previous example from last year, but if you look at 17, 18, 19, and 20, that's four years, 12 months, and um, per year, that's 48 months that you're talking about times the average premium, which is about $30. You're talking about a lot of money for each uh, month that will be added to your premium forever. So um, in this particular example, it was 36 months at the average premium of $33. So it's an additional, basically an additional 12 months for every month uh, that uh, 12 months every, 12, excuse me, $12 for all 12 months for each year. So it's $144 additional per year, but that cost keeps going up. So if you're not taking any Medicaid, lesson learned on this one, you do not have to enroll in Part D. If you want to enroll in Part D when you're first eligible as a placeholder in case you find that you are prescribed expensive medication or for the future, my suggestion is that you enroll in the least expensive plan possible. This year, I think it's a silver script that's $7.30 per month. And if you are able, just pay that 
even though you're not taking medication so that you are not hit with that penalty down the road. It might be a little bit of uh, expense now, but certainly a cost savings later in, because we know how expensive medication can be. Okay, so each plan has a formulary and it's the list of drugs they cover. So they do, they break out the coverage uh, by tiers. So obviously tier one is the cheapest, the lowest copayment. That's most of the generics. Tier two is a medium copayment and that's preferred uh, generics and, and brand names, preferred brand names. Uh, it's some more expensive, very few generics are in there. It's mostly preferred brand names. Uh, tier three is a higher copayment, non-preferred brand name drugs and Tier four are specialty drugs. Some some uh, cancer drugs fall into this. Some rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis drugs fall into this category. They are unique, specialty, and very expensive drugs. You can always appeal to the plan and ask them if they if you are prescribed a tier four or specialty drug, ask the plan if they will allow that drug to be a tier exception for you, and. Perhaps the plan will say, I know it's a tier four, um, but uh, on our formulary, but we will bill you at a tier three copay. That is possible. Drug, drug uh, Part D plans do that. There are also prescription assistance programs available, but always go to your plan and ask if they'll make an exception. Okay, so there are six protected categories that all, drug, or all drugs in these categories must be covered. So that's cancer, HIV, AIDS, antidepressants, antipsychotic, anticonvulsants, immunosuppressants, and then vaccines. Vaccines fall into um, commercially available vaccines. Vaccines fall into a couple of categories. The flu shots are uh, in part B, but the other, like the shingrick, shingles vaccine is in the uh, part D. There are also drugs that are excluded. So some drugs aren't covered at all. And here are some of the categories. Um, and I'm not gonna go through them all, but a couple of things uh, are uh, important to note. Over-the-counter drugs are not covered. Prescription vitamins and minerals are not covered. Um, coughs and cold medicine for flu season, not covered. Your flu shot is though, very important. Um, and then the rest, I'm not going to go over. Anything cosmetic optional surgery that's not, uh, not medically necessary is uh, the drugs for that are not covered. So let's talk about costs. So each Part D plan has its own cost, as I mentioned. In 2021, there are 31 different plans and they range anywhere from the $7.30 a month to $147.80. The average has gone down for 2021 and it's $30.50. The copay depends on where the plan puts it in terms of its tier level. So uh, that's, you know, that's in, that's unique to each plan. The deductible this year is, uh, is stated by Medicare. It cannot exceed $445 for the year. And not all plans charge the deductible. Some charge zero or somewhere in between the 445 and zero. Uh, as with part B and the previous chart showed it, uh, people with higher incomes will pay higher premiums. And this is just a chart of how Medicare works, uh, Part D works. So initially at the very beginning of the year and, and every year the clock starts over, that's important to remember. There is an initial deductible period. So if your plan has a deductible, you pay 100% of the retail cost of the drug. Uh, it's the negotiated retail. So obviously if someone walked into the pharmacy with no insurance, they would probably pay more, but you would pay the what your plan gets as a retail cost until you've met your deductible. If you have no deductible, obviously you'll get not even look at the orange phase and you'll go right to yellow, which is your initial coverage phase. During the initial coverage phase, you would pay 25% of the cost of the medication, the retail cost of the medication, the plan pays 75%. That holds true all the way till you get to the catastrophic phase where you pay 5% and the plan picks up 95%. Now let's see what this means in dollars. So in dollars, when you have uh, your deductible paid and the initial coverage, you've gone into that, you pay that 25% until you have you and the plan have paid 
4130, then you get into the coverage gap and then see the similarity, you pay 25% until you and the plan have paid the 4130. In the gap, you again, pay 25%, the plan pays 75%. And while I'll go into detail on this, it's important to notice the coverage gap because at that point, the plan is entitled to charge 25% of the cost of the medication. They're entitled all along, but you'll see most of the plans do not cover or do not charge 25%. They charge much less. And so when people hit that coverage gap, the price of their drugs goes up and they don't know why. This is, this is um, an option that the plans have chosen to charge less than they're entitled to early. And uh, we'll go into this in the next slide, but the coverage gap, if you hit it, and not everyone does, if your drugs are, are not uh, as expensive, then you may never hit it. Then after you and the plan combined pay $6,550, you go into the catastrophic coverage and pay 5% for the rest of the year. This is a little confusing, but when you go into the medicare.gov website and look at their plan finders and look up your unique drugs uh, that you take your prescriptions, the, the dosage, then you can see how this works. Uh, the plan finder is great about giving you a chart and a month by month cost of what your drugs will, uh, will cost you. So when you go into the good donut, the coverage gap, it kind of sounds like the donut hole, doesn't it? Remember we got rid of the donut hole. Um, however, a, the, even though the donut hole is closed, there's still levels of coverage. And these are the levels we spoke about a moment ago. Part D plans are allowed to charge their members up to 25% of the full uh, cost of the drug immediately after the deductible. But again, many of them choose not to. By choosing not to, we all get the feeling that, okay, we're not paying as much as 25%, but then when we get a notice in that we've hit the coverage gap, all of a sudden our prices go up, that is why the plan is entitled to. So you gotta look at your whole year of costs when you're evaluating a plan to see the peaks and valleys of how you're going to be charged and only evaluate plans according to the full cost. Don't just look at premium. Don't just look at deductible. You've got to look at your premium, your deductible, and your drug costs. And that's how you'll evaluate the entire, the entire year. Okay, I'm not going to go over this chart at all because um, it's too hard to do on a small screen. But uh, what it does is it tells you each segment of the gap of what I just said in writing. So you've got it. Uh, so here's an example. So let's say Jane uh, has a plan with a zero deductible. This is a list of what she's taking and dose is important. How many you take a month? 30, 60, 30 she's taking once a day, 60 she's taking twice a day. The tiers that her plan puts these drugs in. So one is a preferred generic, three is a preferred brand. Um, uh, one is a preferred generic, three preferred brand, full price is the regular retail of the drug, initial coverage. Again, Jane has no deductible. The plan is charging her a dollar 47, one, one, 47. See, they're nice round numbers. Then she hits that coverage gap, okay? And that's when she and the plan have paid 4130 out of pocket, uh, 4130 combined. Then the costs go up dramatically in some cases. Look at the Xarelto. 113.29 is 25% of 453.15. So she will actually see when she goes into the gap that her price goes is two and a half times as much. So that's something Jane needs to be aware of when we're looking at plans and evaluating them, that that will happen with the expensive drugs. They are not, uh, the plan has the right to charge her 113.29 from the beginning. They choose not to. Okay, little little uh, confusing, but it's something to certainly be aware of. Okay, any questions here? You guys are gonna make me talk the whole hour and a half, aren't you? Okay, <laughs> so Medicare Advantage plan. A lot of people ask what the Medicare Advantage plans are. First of all, Medicare Advantage plans are health plans. They are offered by the uh, private companies who have contracts with Medicare to offer Medicare services to Medicare beneficiaries. 
So instead of getting all your service, services from Medicare, you get them from these plans. So essentially you pay Medicare your premium and Medicare play, pays these private plans to provide you services. They're all in one, most of them. Some do offer A and B and not a drug plan. Most of the ones in our area are all included where they do offer A, B, and a, and a D, uh, D benefit as well. So it's a one-stop shop for everybody. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you cannot have a standalone Part D plan and or a supplement. It is illegal. Number one, you don't need it. Number two, do not allow anyone to sell them to you because they are not permitted. So Medicare Advantage plan includes, uh, can include some extra benefits too. The important thing about them is you need to stay in network, but they also allow things like uh, dental coverage and vision coverage and fitness coverage or non-related uh, things like um, meal deliveries or sometimes transportation. So they do have a lot of, of add-ons. Sometimes they offer deals on hearing aids too, which is nice uh, and hearing coverage. So that's also uh, nice. Some of the plans may charge an additional premium, but typically they accept what you're paying already for Medicare Part B, which is the 148.50, you pay that premium regardless, and then they will just cover you for that and not charge you an additional premium. The only tricky thing is um, the plans have networks, meaning every doctor you go to, every pharmacy you go to, every specialist, every hospital has to be part of the plan's network. If it is not, the plan will not cover it. You will pay 100% of the cost of your, of your services. So that's very important. Um, they have mail order options. All the plans have mail order, or sometimes their mail order is cheaper than the pharmacy directly. And um, they also work on a copay basis. So with a supplement and a uh, Part D, you're paying premiums monthly. Um, and uh, with a, an Advantage plan, you're not paying monthly premiums. What you're doing, additional monthly premiums, what you're doing is you're paying as you go. So you go to the doctor and there's a visit fee and you go to a specialist and there's a, there's a copay visit fee. You go to the hospital, there's a copay. So it, it's a pay as you go plan. So these work very well for, pe for some people. Not, not for everybody, but they're great for some people. Okay, very important. There is help available for people that need assistance paying for their medication and the, the costs of Medicare Part D. The Social Security Administration uh, handles the uh, enrollment process of the low income subsidy plan. It's called Extra Help. And what it does is it will uh, cover your premium, your deductible, and then offer low, lower, much lower co-pays on your prescription drugs. So if you're eligible, and I'll show you the guidelines in the next slide, uh, this is a great savings. Anybody who's on SSI is uh, entitled to this automatically. Anybody who's on Medicaid, full Medicaid, not, not people that have a spend down, they uh, are eligible for it automatically. And there's a, a program called the Medicare Savings Program that you can apply to uh, for through Medicaid that is, uh, it pays your Part B, um, premium. Anyone enrolled in that, that program will also be entitled to extra help without having to uh, enroll. So this is something that is, that is a great help and a serious savings. So here's some of the eligibility uh, limits for the extra help program. For full extra help, you uh, have to have income at or below $14.56 a month. That is before anything is uh, taken out. Taxes, if you're working or uh, any Medicare premiums or uh, B or D, it's the full amount for Social Security recipients and assets 9360. That means money in the bank uh, and stocks, bonds, mutual funds, IRAs, uh, 401ks, it's all savings. Uh, it is not just your checking account. So make sure that is that's complete. But with this, and then the couple is obviously for two people, 1960 a month is the income and 14,800 is the asset threshold. Um, you must have part A and or part B to get the uh, subsidy. It coordinates with the part D plan and your premiums are considerably lower. So depending on uh, where your income and assets fall, 
Your copays could be as low if you're full Medicaid or SSI as $1.30 for uh, generics and $3.70 a month for, um, uh, for branded drugs or $3.70 a month for generics and $9.20 for branded if you are not on Medicaid and you're some, in some of the other programs. This program isn't an all or nothing. There's a second level that will cover you as well if you have a little bit of higher income and uh, your co-pays are at the higher end and they also have co-insurance depending if you're at the top end of the income and asset eligibility of this program. But it's really great. And you can enroll through uh, ssa.gov, Social Security's website, and just look for extra help. Uh, this is a help slide talking about where to go for assistance. There's also the patient assistance programs. These are offered by the individual drug manufacturers to help pay for their drugs. So often their uh, enrollment is very, eligibility is very generous, meaning that where Medicaid is at poverty level for income. These programs don't look at your money in the bank and they often will allow you to have income up to four times the federal poverty level, which is sometimes up to $50,000 a year. You go to either rxassist.org or needymeds.org and type in the name of your medication and it will uh, pop up all the programs that are you're eligible for. Another thing that's not on these slides that I wanna mention and I will add it to my slides is GoodRx. G-O-O-D-R-X. And GoodRx has coupons and the coupons are very, very good savings. And in fact, some Medicare uh, Part D plans have drugs that aren't covered. If you go to GoodRx, you can get a discount on many of these medications. And I've found people that have saved hundreds of dollars going to GoodRx. Another thing is um, all of this is overwhelming. There are people to help you and that's as important. SHIP is a program, Senior Health Insurance Program is uh, available to everyone who needs assistance in enrollment. They can help talk through which plans are best for you. Or is Medicare Advantage an option? Is it a good option for you? Uh, if it's not, are there supplements that are, are helpful? What do they cost? So that's another thing too. Uh, here's a list of counselors that, avail that are available. North Shore Senior Center has SHIP counselors, uh, Levy Center in Evanston, Village of Skokie and CJE Senior Life. Also, uh, all four of them have SHIP counselors. So what's new in Medicare for 2021? First of all, anybody who is diabetic, there are Part D plans that have insulin charge costs that are much lower. Insulin has been one of those horrible situations that when it was manufactured, when it was, when it was uh, invented years ago, it was invented in Canada, and the gentleman who pulled the patent for insulin said, I'm only charging a dollar for this because I do not want anyone to have to pay for insulin. I, it's ridiculous. And this is a long time ago, obviously, because we know what insulin costs now, but uh, it's gone through the roof. And that's the Congresswoman has uh, done a lot of work on curbing egregious um, charges for Part D drugs. And, and insulin is one of her pet peeves in, in terms of it, uh, the the drug manufacturers being very unfair in what they're charging. This year, there are plans that are having lower charges and lower costs for insulin. So there's a Part D senior savings model available. Also, people with end-stage renal disease could not join Medicare Advantage plans previously. They can now. So that's, that's um, a new thing to Medicare. Medicare didn't cover acupuncture. Now they do, 12 visits in 90 days. And Medicare has a comparison tool uh, several comparison tools that are great right now. They just added them. They uh, let you compare nursing homes, doctors. And I just found out like 10 minutes ago, I was on a call with SHIP and they told me, uh, the ship count, ship, head of SHIP told me that Medicare has a Medicare supplement finder that is very good that can even quote you prices because people always ask, what are the prices of the Medicare supplement? And they're kind of all over the board, but they have a, a, plan finder for supplements. So that's a really cool thing at medicare.gov that you can look into um, and get help with. They also have live chat and Q&A on medicare.gov. So you can get help while you're doing it. And I was just told that there's a 15 minute video on medicare.gov that goes through the details of finding your own Part D plan. It teaches you how to do it on the Medicare website. And um, I was told that it is very helpful and easy to use. So 
I, my job might be extinct this time of year next year. Who knows? <laughs> I wish you all could figure it out and then come to me and say, hey, I found the best plan and we can confer. Uh, what else is new? So one of the, I don't want to say a benefit of COVID, there are no benefits to COVID. It's a horrible disease. But one thing that COVID has sparked has been a lot of innovations in uh, treatment and care. So one thing that's been really good are e-visits. Um, not for everything, obviously, but we all have uh, experienced things during COVID where we need, or many of us, not all of us, but where we want to talk to our doctor and it's not safe to do so. So we can go online and have a video teleconference with our doctor. So Medicare is going to continue with electronic visits for some, some things. Um, and, and that's really a, a good thing. The, um, a lot of the, one of the best things about telehealth has been for mental health services, that people are able to stay home and not, uh, not miss their therapy appointments or people that didn't consider therapy before who need it now are able or have always needed it, are comfortably able to do so from their homes, which is fantastic. Um, so Medicare now covers flu shots and um, that's something to know. And you can get them locally, just bring your Medicare card and it won't cost you anything. And as far as the shingle shot, Shingrix is the one that they are using now. That is covered by most Part D plans. So um, you make sure to, when you get these shots to take your Part D uh, or your uh, Part D card with you, your ID. And be careful when you're getting Shingrix shots, this has happened recently. If you think while I'm at my doctor or my hosp in the hospital uh, getting other, other procedures done, I'm gonna get a shingle shot. Make sure that that is in network for your Part D plan. It may be cheaper for you to go to a pharmacy and do it. Just be aware, look at your plan guidelines because they are very expensive. So uh, take heed. Okay, Medicare covers flu shots. Okay, um, it's for people 65 and older who are risk of having serious complications from the flu. Um, it, really important, Medicare is doing a lot of promotion on this. They also have a vaccine finder uh, at the cdc.gov website where you can type in your zip code and find the closest place to get a vaccine near you. Takeaways, so... <laughs> Not to be redundant, but I'm going to say it again. Medicare open enrollment, October 15th through December 7th. The changes will take effect January 1st, 2021. Remember, you will not get another chance to change things until 2021, October 15th, if you don't look at this and you wanted to change plans. So please, please, please take note that you need to get this done by December 7th. If you need help, again, SHIP can help you. You can do it on your own. You can call our office. You can call the North Shore Senior Center or New Tier Township and ask for Jean Rosser. We'll probably refer you to me, but um, I'm happy to help. Jean is great. She can help you with other things as well. I think that is my quick and dirty on Medicare Part D, and I went through it pretty fast. So, um, and you did a fine job. Let me. <laughs> Any questions anyone has? Mayor Beth, yes, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, are, can you cover or, or describe briefly what any uh, uh, limitations are to Medicare Advantage plans, such as using them in various parts of the country? Sure. So Medicare Advantage plans, along with Part D plans, are regional. Okay, so if you are moving, you like for snowbirds, that may be an issue. You need to contact your plan and see if how that's going to work if you're a snowbird. Uh, emergency services are always covered no matter where you are. So if you are having a health issue, then you go to the doctor, go to the hospital, do what you got to do, uh, and your plan will cover it. I, depending on the plan, and I have not heard many plans that will say, okay, well, here's your network for Chicago and here's your network for Arizona, or here's your network for Chicago and here's your network for Florida. So if you do a lot of that, where you are living six months, four months in another place where you are going to need routine medical care, my suggestion is speak with the plans, but it's my understanding that an Advantage plan may not be the best way to go because of the network issue. Great, thank you. You're welcome.
Thanks for the question. Other questions for Mary Beth? I think you've done such a wonderful <laughs> job. Everyone is. Excited. You guys know this stuff, right? <laughs> Good. Yeah, thank you very much. Very informative. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Appreciate it. We will be putting uh, Mary Beth's deck on the www.nutrier township website. Um, and also a replay of this uh, video conference will be on our YouTube channel, uh, which is Nutrier Township, of course. Uh, Mary Beth, any closing thoughts before uh, you, you wrap up for today? Yeah, I, I, first of all, thank you for attending. Um, and I just want to tell everybody, um, a lot's going on right now in our country. And um, the, the, the sense of, of fear is, is overwhelming because we don't know so much. COVID is scary. Um, I, what I can say right now is please, you know, follow the science, wear your masks, you know, socially distant, be careful. Uh, just use your common sense, but, but more importantly, you know, look at science and, and medical and speak with your doctor. If you have issues, if you have symptoms, um, Medicare Part D is really important if you're in it, um, if you're eligible, certainly, because I don't know if you guys have tried to buy drugs regular retail, prescription drugs regular retail. It's, they're crazy expensive. I mean, the Congresswoman has many, many bills in, in the hopper. She's, they passed through the house um, that uh, put curbs on, on Medicare uh, drugs and uh, the certainly the cost, the costs are ridiculously expensive. Uh, she has a bill that has passed that caps the out of pocket at much lower than it is now. So uh, those bills are, are through the house. They are sitting at the Senate. So we will see, but uh, real important, take care of yourselves. Flu season, get shots. Uh, and I've got to put my plug in, please vote. Please, please vote. Uh, voting ends November 3rd. And um, yeah, your early voting is available. You can, uh, those of you who have requested vote by mail ballots, you can drop that, you can put them in the postal uh, USPS box, or you can drop them at your local poll polling site. They have secure drop boxes. You can also vote early starting on the 19th, which was this week. Polls are, uh, polling places, early voting polling places are open from, uh, oh gosh, I want to say 8.30 a.m. till 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. And Oh, 9 to 5.30, I believe, on Saturday and Sunday up through the 7th, or uh, through the 2nd. Um, the uh, voting day is November 3rd. The, um, and you can just vote, if you have a vote by mail ballot, you can complete it and put it in the Dropbox at the early voting site. The, um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, the Cook County Clerk's website has a list of early voting places and their hours. So don't check that first. Don't quote me on, I know they're open till seven during the week, but the opening time I'm, a, I'm not a hundred percent on. So please check on that. Otherwise, I think that pretty well covers it. Mary Beth, thank you as always for doing it even under these uh, unusual circumstances. <laughs> and uh, I'll let me just leave the, uh, the listeners with uh, resources are available at the township website, nutriertownship.com. If you visit resident services, our publications are available. You can subscribe to our dispatch e-news, which is every other Friday. It's a free publication with information such as wonderful events like uh, Mary Beth and others who present for the township, uh, local news. And uh, our courier newsletter is also available uh, to residents and, and others uh, on our website. It's a PDF. It's also free. So I encourage you also to listen to our podcasts, either on Apple Podcasts or SoundCloud dot com where we have our podcast channel so mary beth thank you so much for uh being here and and doing such a great job thanks jack thanks for inviting me this is always fun it's kind of weird to do by zoom i will tell you it's just i'm so used to interacting with people so it's you know it's, it's interesting it's very interesting I, I look forward to times when we can get back to that that will be fun 
<laughs> as do I. It's always good to be with you in person. And thanks again for being with us today. Thanks, Jack. Be well. Everybody take care. Be well.